Hello and welcome to Lawbeck Luxury Cars. I'm Harry and on this edition of the Friday Drive, I've got something a little bit unusual and it's this, our 1979 Clenet Continental Series 1. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking that this car's from the 1930s because the external exhaust manifold, the overhanging external mud guards and the endless bright work, but that's where things start getting a little bit interesting. Now you're probably thinking at this stage that this is a kit car, but again, you'd be wrong. This is a hand-built coach car, totally bespoke, and it's only one of 250, this one being number 206, that come from Clenet's factory in Santa Barbara, California. So how did they do this, you're probably asking. Well, what they did is they took the body, engine, gearbox, differential from a Lincoln, and then the body from an MG Roadster to create what you see right here. But anyway, that's enough chit chat for the moment. Let's get it on the road and see what's what. Wrong side. The history of the Clenet is a curious one. Founded by Frenchman Alain Clenet in 1975, who had a vision for creating cars that were art. The vehicle produced by Clenet caught the eyes of many celebrities who stumped up over a hundred thousand US dollars back in the 1970s. A few of the familiar names who purchased a Clenet include Julio Iglesias, Farrah Fawcett, Rod Stewart, Sylvester Stallone, King Hussein of Jordan, just to name a few. Let's say Rod Stewart or Sylvester Stallone's on your Christmas gift list. Don't get them this because they already have one. Here is a car I want to show you. Mr. Timpany, Mr. Music, please. This is a Clenet. However, though the car was recognised as both impressive to drive and look at, in 1980 production ceased and Delane Clenet filed for bankruptcy. I have been on paper bankrupt for a good year, at least, supported by the deposits of my customers who believed in our ability to produce. After this, the entrails of the company were purchased by Alfred de Mora, and the company still exists today and is still building cars. Most notably, however, is the Clenet was selected by President Reagan as the official centennial car in 1986 for the centennial year of the gasoline-powered automobile, and was inducted into the Automotive Hall of Fame as a result. What the Clenet did was essentially get rid of all the drawbacks from driving 1930s cars. I mean, we've got power steering, an automatic transmission, air conditioning, a radio with surround sound and all of that sort of modern stuff, stuff we take for granted today. So in essence, it's basically the best of both worlds. We have the styling, which is so iconic of the 1930s, but with all the modern conveniences and all the mod cons that we sort of take for granted these days. I mean, if you haven't driven a car from the 1930s or earlier veteran cars, it's an experience. I personally love it, but it's not for everyone. But this, it is for everyone. And the other thing that really stands out in the Clenet is all the sort of luxuries, so not mod cons, but actual luxuries. I mean, we've got acres of Connolly leather and these seats are extremely comfortable and really well really well upholstered. And we've got this lovely burr walnut dash, which is of course all handcrafted, lambswool carpets, and my two particular favorite things once I get around this corner here, is the etched glass in the quarter vent and down here, which you can't see because it's not in frame, but I'm sure there'll be a bit of B-roll coming up, is a Waterford, yes, Waterford crystal ashtray. Now, I'm not quite sure how it's a good idea, particularly in a convertible, having an ashtray that's completely open. I mean, if you're on smoking a lung buster or chowing down on one of Castro's wands, um, unless you're going very slow, I imagine you're going to wear most of it. I'll admit, this is a pretty ridiculous car. The styling is outrageous and the bling is so over the top, but I like it. I like the fact that there were, and still are, artisans out there putting their vision into reality even if it turns out to be a financial disaster almost all of the time. Both Elaine Clenet and Alfred de Mora were complete lunatics, there's no two ways about it. But you know what, good on them, because creating a car like this is just, it's the work of a madman, like I said, but it's so much fun. And look, to be perfectly honest, when I first saw this car, uh, I was thought mm, it was a bit of a joke in a funny way. It said like, who's gonna want one of these? 
but driving it, it's completely changed my mind. It's actually a really nice car to drive. And every time you stop, which to be honest, I find a little bit annoying, it, everyone has to stop and ask you a question about it. I mean, if I just pull up here, let's see how long it takes me I'll do a U-turn, see how long it takes me to get someone talking to me. Oop, get into gear. Hi there. Hi, how are you going? Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's a bit interesting. So if you're in the market for something totally unique and different, you're too late because our pristine example which is 13,723 miles from you, has sold to a multi-car enthusiast collector. So you'll have to be faster next time, if we ever get another Clinet Continental again. We'll see you next week.